And then we get a call from my buddy Scott Brown. He happens to be running for the United States Senate in Massachusetts. And check this out, ladies and gentlemen. The election is in 30 days. No wonder Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid and Barack Obama want to get this baby passed. Before you have the likes of Republicans, Scott Brown suddenly dropped into the U.S. Senate in a matter of 30 days. Mr. Brown, thanks for joining us, my friend. Well, Jamie, it's great to be on uh, with the Laura Ingram uh, uh, listeners and, and with you. I appreciate the opportunity. And I did call in because I hear regularly 2010. Well, folks, uh, it's, it's in 30 days. Uh, January 19th, I can be the 41st senator. Uh, and stop the madness. Uh, this health care proposal, along with cap and trade, the expiring tax cuts, and the war tax uh, potential that may come about are not good for the country. They're not certainly not good for Massachusetts. And people can go to brownforussenate.com, learn more about me, and I can be the 41st senator. And that's what they're very, very worried about. Trust me. So the fact is, Paul Kirk, who was, uh, well, could be the determined to be the 60th vote, turns into a pumpkin. Uh, after the first of the year, and you are running currently against an attorney general, Democrat attorney general in Massachusetts to uh, to replace uh, Senator Ed Kennedy, Ted Kennedy. And I'm telling you what, Scott, I guess when it comes to conservative credentials, you know, uh, how are you faring and, and, and how, how do people react to you and how would you stand? I, uh, I'm a lieutenant colonel presently serving 30 years this December 29th in the military. I'm very strong on foreign policy and national security. I'm known as the fiscal watchdog, the guardian of small businesses. I've never voted for a tax increase in the 12 years in the legislature. I'm a former assessor, selectman, state rep, state senator, and they're very scared about me. The, the Democrat machine is coming out uh, to make sure that I do not become the 41st senator. And if people want to make a difference, they can start right now. They can go to my website. They can get it involved. They can donate. And uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, folks, because JFK's party is no longer around here in Massachusetts. And the person that's running right now is totally out of touch with the fiscal and social issues uh, that many of us care about. Yeah, and I got to tell you, it, when it comes to uh, what's at stake here, I mean, I guess there's a possibility that this health care reform package will not uh, will not go through as they want it to by Christmas Eve. And if that's the case, then they have to wait uh, for the January recess to be over. And then suddenly uh, you're there if you get elected. Well, it doesn't matter because, as you know, it has to go through conference committee. And there's two versions, the House and Senate versions, are so different. Uh, I'll still be able to hopefully, because we passed Massachusetts uh, health care. It's almost a universal. We have 98 percent of our people are actually insured. So why would we have a half a trillion of Medicare cuts, uh, TRICARE being cut in the military, and then have longer lines, lesser care, and pay more taxes and fees? It's not good for Massachusetts, and certainly it's not good for the country. If other states want to do what we've done, I'm happy to go and show them how to do it. Yeah, and of course this whole Kirk, uh, this whole shell game that was played with Kirk, uh, I mean it's offensive to begin with how it all went down. Right. Well, we have three speakers that have been indicted. Two senators resigned in disgrace. As of yesterday, we have a senator who's uh, in home confinement for a hit and run. And uh, Governor Patrick manipulated, along with President Obama, the Senate succession issue here in Massachusetts because President Kennedy, I'm sorry, Senator Kennedy uh, took that power away when Governor Romney was in play. Then he wrote a letter asking to switch it back so they could send Kirk down there to be the 60th vote. So me and others like me would not get a chance to stop the madness down there. And folks, if you're upset and you're not happy with the way things are going nationally, um, I can stop it. And I'm willing to go down there to do just that. And that's what the Democrats, not only here, but President Obama, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, all the special interest groups, Governor Patrick, they don't want that to happen. And they're very, very concerned. And I'm going to win this race. There's no doubt. Because when people want to uh, want change, they vote for me. And it, it's happened in the last 10 elections. And uh, I'm ready to go. I'll tell you what, buddy. When they they've had a they've had a Republican governor in uh, Massachusetts, they certainly can have a Republican senator in, in Massachusetts. That that sounds great. I think the people are raring to go and ready for that, especially in the wake of this particular vote, Scott Brown. Well, we've had 16 years of Republican governors. Now we have a governor, a Democrat governor, and we've gone from a three billion dollar structural surplus to basically being broke and uh, totally out of touch with the needs of Massachusetts. But this national, you just throw in cap and trade, which is a national energy tax, and then you throw in uh, the expiring tax cut 
assets, which is an across-the-board tax increase for every business and citizen in the country, and then throw in a war tax plus all your individual state taxes, well, folks, they can go to brownforussenate.com. They can make a difference. They can get involved, stop complaining, stop whining, and, and send somebody down there who's serving in the military, who is strong on, on all the issues that are important to you, and make a difference. Everything's on my website, so go and get involved. And have a merry, merry Christmas, too. Godspeed to you, Scott Brown. We appreciate you joining us here on the Laura Ingram Show. It's brown for dot com. The election, ladies and gentlemen, is in 30 days. And if, in fact, by some stretch of the imagination, this formal health care reform bill doesn't go through the way they wanted to on the 24th of uh, December this coming uh, this, this week on Christmas Eve, then, folks, there's a shot. There's a shot at at, at whittling away at the 60 votes that the Dems currently have on their side to make this thing go through. Keep in mind, folks, uh, all kinds of things wrong with this particular bill, not to mention the fact that it's probably going to increase a lot of your premiums. It's going to forbid you from having adequate choice, and it's also going to be funding abortion to the tune of about a buck a month is what you're going to be paying into an abortion fund. Scott Brown, good luck to you. He's on the road there in Massachusetts campaigning. And, it's, again, uh, uh, Scott Brown called up the show because he heard me talking about, you know, when people said, what, what do we need to do? What's next? I said, well, you got to vote in 2010. And Scott Brown brings up the point, hey, you don't have to vote in 2010, uh, the November 2010. You can vote early and, well, not often, but you can vote in January for the U.S. Senate race to uh, to to fill in for uh, Senator Ted Kennedy.